This is part four of the four-part series, Building an Interactive Restaurant Guide. In part one, we did our layout in Photoshop, and we imported our Photoshop file into three separate products, Flash, Flash Catalyst, and InDesign. Part two focused on developing the restaurant guide in Flash. Part three focused on developing the restaurant guide in Flash Catalyst. And we are now in our third product, InDesign, and we're going to make an interactive Flash application. Now you may not have been aware of these features of InDesign that you can create interactive documents. This is something that's been available since InDesign CS4, but has been enhanced a lot in InDesign CS5. Now my disclaimer here is I am not an InDesign user. I'm not uh, very skilled with InDesign, so many of you watching this can probably find a better way to do some of the things that I'm doing. I would encourage you to uh, do it your own way. But my goal here is to show you the process of developing something interactively uh, so you could compare that to the process of Flash and Flash Catalyst and simply choose the best one or the one that you're most comfortable with. Now, if you'll notice, I have all my content imported and on different layers. I have a content layer, which has uh, four panels that are kind of sitting on top of the content. These are the panels we are going to reveal when clicking the four panel buttons. And you'll see these four pieces here. Now, each panel not only has its sort of background graphic, but it also has an overstate. So, for example, I can toggle the overstate to panel one. And I intend on turning these into buttons so that when you mouse over them, that overstate shows up. Uh, again, on clicking, it will reveal the full content. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group the objects that I want to make into a button because, again, there's two separate images involved here. So I'm going to select everything on this first panel, and I'm just going to group that under the object menu. Control or Command G is the shortcut as well. I'm going to go through and group the rest of these. You'll notice in the Layers panel they kind of end up in a sub uh, uh, layer. And the Layers panel is behaving quite a bit like Illustrator's Layers panel. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first group here and I want to convert this to a button. So I'm going to find my Buttons panel and I'm going to click the, uh, the option down at the bottom to create a new button. Now this is tr actually converting these objects to a button. Think of this like a convert to symbol if you come from the flash side of things. I'm going to click on the next group, convert to a button. Third group, convert to a button. Fourth group, convert to a button. I now have four buttons. Now at any time during this process, you can click this little preview option down in the, in, this is available in the buttons panel, you'll see this later in the animations panel. This actually previews the document as a flash application. So if I hit that preview option, the preview panel will pop up and this is literally a flash file. I can mouse over any of these objects. I'm clicking on them. Of course, nothing's happening because we haven't gotten that far yet. But this is testing the SWF file. I'm going to close the preview. Now I'm going to go back. Now I said I want on mouse over to show this these options down below. So I'm going to click on this first button again. I'm going to go to the buttons panel and I'm going to click on the rollover state. This is creating a rollover state for this button and what I can do now is manipulate my layers to show what I want to happen. Now this is actually what I want the rollover state to look like. So I'm going to go back to the normal state. I'm going to pull back up my layers. I'm going to find button one and I'm going to hide the over panel. So I've hidden this layer on the normal state. As I click to the over state, you'll see this show up. Now I'm going to repeat this process for the next button. I'm going to click on the button. I'm going to add a rollover state. But since everything already looks good in this state, I'm going to go back to the normal state, go to my layers, and hide that over graphic. I'm going to repeat this process two more times for my other buttons. Now that I have all four buttons with a rollover state, I can go back to my buttons panel and preview my document. And you'll notice as I mouse over each of these, I now see a sort of details region showing up down below. Very easy interactivity. 
Now this is great if this was a one page document, but this is going to be a multi page or multi state document. So I'm going to close this preview window and I'm going to go back and find my pages panel. And I just want to duplicate this spread four times to make my four separate pages. So I'm just going to right click and say duplicate spread, duplicate spread, duplicate spread, duplicate spread. So I now have a five page document. I need to go through each page and make each page look how I want it to. So for example, I'm going to double click on page two. So I'm now viewing page two. I'm going to go back to my layers and I'm going to show content one because again our first page is our menu. Our second page is going to show the first piece of content. I'm going to go back to my pages, go to page three, go to my layers and show content two. Go back to my pages and repeat this process for the rest of my pages. At this point I have shown the appropriate content on each page and if I were to double click to go to each of my different pages you'll see a different piece of content showing. I've noticed in InDesign these thumbnails don't always preview exactly what's showing up on each page so uh, ignore the thumbnails that you're seeing from my page states and just focus on the content that's actually showing up as I change pages. So my final piece to this is telling each button which page to go to. So I'm going to go back and click on a button. I'm going to go to my buttons panel and I'm going to add an action to this just by clicking the plus button. You'll notice a number of actions here. I can have this take me to a different URL. I can have it play an animation. Well, in this case, I actually want this to go to a page. So I'm going to choose go to a page and this button is going to go to page two. I'm going to click on my next button. I'm going to go to a page. This is going to go to page three. Click on the third button. Go to a page. This is going to go to page four. And click on that final button. Go to a page. And this is going to go to page five. All four buttons are now wired to go to the appropriate page. I'm going to click my preview button to preview the document. You'll notice again I can roll over these. Although you'll notice clicking them is not taking me to the correct page and that's because this preview window works in a couple of different ways. In the lower right corner you'll notice three separate buttons and these buttons change how the preview window previews. The first button will preview just the object you have selected. The second button will preview just the page you are on and the third button will preview the entire document. So if I click that third button and I go back and hit the play button here to sort of refresh the preview, it'll come up the same although it's actually including the other pages in the preview and now as I click a button you'll see the appropriate page show up. And that was great. I now have a nice way of seeing details although I don't have a easy way of going back, nor do I have a nice animation of this showing. So I'm going to finish this demo by adding not only an animation, but also a click to return back to the menu. So let's go to our second page. Now I want on click of this entire object here to just take me back. That way they can click anywhere and return back to the menu page. So I'm going to actually make this into a button as well. I'm going to select this big graphic here, go to my buttons panel, and I'm going to make this into a button. Now I don't really care about overstates or anything else because this is just going to be a clickable object. So I am going to add a go to page action and this is going to go to page one. At this point I can go to my next page, page three, select the object, buttons panel, make it a button and make it take me back to page one. I'm going to repeat this same process for my other two pages. I now have all four pieces of content converted to a button and able to take me back to the menu page. I can click the preview button to preview this. 
Again, I need to make sure that I preview the entire document, not just this first page. So I'm going to change to the entire document and hit refresh. This will actually preview from the first page. I can now click on any object and click to go back. And you'll notice I can now view any page and return back to the main menu. So my last piece is to add a little animation. So I'm going to start with the second page. I'm going to click on this object and I'm going to find one of the new panels, the animation panel. The animation panel is pretty easy to use. You click on an object and then you select an animation and there's a number of preset animations. These can all be edited actually with Flash if you wanted to do some very customized animations. You can also import animations from Flash. We're not going to get that complex here. I'm just going to tell this to fade in. I really don't like slow fades so I'm going to change my duration to be half a second, 0.5. And notice the event, when does this fade in? On page load. So as soon as this page shows up, this will fade in. Now if you want to preview this, you could hit the preview button. It'll preview just this page and show that object fading in. But I'm going to finish the rest of my animations before I move on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double click the next page. I'm going to select the object. I'm going to add a fade in and change it to 0.5. I'm going to repeat this process for the rest of my pages by going to the page, selecting the content, choosing to fade in, and setting the duration to 0.5. For the record, you can actually save out animations as a preset so that you don't have to repeat the same process. You can just select it from a list, but again, we'll worry about that in a later tutorial. All right, I have all of my fades ready to go. I'm going to preview the document one more time. I'm going to tell InDesign to preview the entire document from page one. I'm going to click on a location and you can see it fade in. Click to go back. Now this isn't an overly complex setup and there's obviously a lot of room for improvement, um, but this was a really fast way to create a nice interactive document leveraging my existing InDesign skills. I didn't have to write any code, I didn't have to learn anything about timelines or animation, I was able to just do my layout in the product I'm comfortable with and add in interactivity through that same product. So this concludes our look at some of the interactive elements of InDesign.